I'm Tom Hackett, and today we're going to talk about USB Type-C and the five barriers to new standards. In a previous video, I talked about the benefits of USB Type-C, and I used my new laptop and new Ultra HD monitor to illustrate those benefits. And what they were was that Type-C allows for very thin laptops, it allows for a nice, clean desktop, and it provides a reversible plug you can always get inserted right the first time. And those benefits were so great, and the whole system worked so well. I wondered, why did it take so long to bring this to production? Well, you might ask, how long did it take? Well, the whole thing started back in 2012. That's when the USB Implementers Forum introduced USB power delivery. Then, in 2014, they introduced the Type-C connector. And yet, it's only today that we see these products beginning to show up where we can access them. So why did it take so long? It turns out there's five reasons, and we're going to dig into those five reasons. But spoiler alert, those five reasons have more to do with general market forces than they do with USB specifically. But let's dig into them. And since we're a technology channel, let's go ahead and pull out some three-letter acronyms. The first one, is TXP. The next is WAS, then CAE, IMS, and PLM. So what do these mean? The first one, TXP means too expensive. Okay, now you can see that I'm going to take some liberties with these acronyms, but just roll with me. So too expensive, what's that up about? Well, when I got this laptop, I knew that it wouldn't plug in with all the other existing USB peripherals that I have. So I was going to have to buy a bunch of dongles. And the benefits were so important to me that I didn't mind spending the extra money to get those dongles. But that's something that the general mass market might not be willing to do. And manufacturers know that, and so their tendency is to delay because the overall thing will be too expensive for most people. The next item. WAS is wait and see. Now, at Cadence, we pride ourselves in being first to market with IP for new standard interfaces. But we actually took a wait and see approach when power delivery was introduced in 2012. When the USB announced it, I flew to Washington, D.C. to meet with people to understand when would SOC companies want IP available to implement in their designs. And what I learned was that the two leading silicon companies were not going to go the SOC route. Instead, they were using FPGAs with small ASICs, and they weren't a good candidate for IP. So what we did was decided to wait and see. The next item, CAE, chicken and egg. You know what this means. In the USB context, it was, well, what should you change to Type-C first? The laptop or the monitor? The mouse or the hub? When everything all exists and an existing solution already exists, it's hard to advance any one piece of that solution. So that's chicken and egg. The next one is IMS, and that stands for Intermediate, Intermediate Solutions. Long before Type-C was available, Long before Type-C tunneled DisplayPort, the USB-IF had an alternative video solution, and that was called Audio Video Device Specification. You could think of this as an interim step to the ultimate DisplayPort solution. But what happens when you have interim steps available? People take that step, and then they stay there. So the stepping stone becomes a speed bump on the way to the ultimate solution, and that's something that played a part there. And this happens all the time in standard interfaces. Now the last one is PLM. And what that means is that pioneers lose money because the pioneers incur the full technological development cost. 
They have to suffer all the failures on the way to success. And there's a classic example of this from a company in the 1990s named Zenith Electronics. Some of you may never have heard of them, but at that point in time, they were a very well-known American brand. They produced televisions, and they were a technology leader. And they did a great job, except they were under intense pressure from Asian suppliers. They decided to double down on their technical expertise and go all in on the next generation of television, which was HDTV. But the problem for Zenith is because of all of these reasons, HDTV was delayed and delayed, and their business declined. So in 1995, they got bought out by an Asian company named the Lok Hui Chemical Corporation. Do you know that company? Well, surprisingly enough, you probably do. Because at the time of the Zenith acquisition, Lok Hui had changed their name to Lucky. Lucky Gold Star. And of course, Lucky Gold Star is the company that we know today as LG. You probably own some of their products. And remember that 5K Ultra HD monitor that I was talking about with the USB hub in the back, the USB-C hub? Well, you guessed it. It's an LG monitor. I'm Tom Hackett, and that's today's Whiteboard Wednesday.